Let's oh, go. so stylish. I'm Confetti Cake, and it's very nice to meet you. Today in Lost Code, we'll be trying to find information about the toys Bubble Trouble and Candies. If you don't know, Lost Code is an investigation series more about obscure and lost toys. We try to find as much information about them as possible. Whether we'll be successful is unsure of, so there's nothing to do but try our best. Let's see who we'll start with. Cat 3, spin the wheel please. Fantastic. While researching other sweet flavored toys, I found this, Bubble Trouble. The name is a little bit vague. When you search it, all you get is an online flash game from the 2000s. But the title, Bubble Trouble, does have a good rhythm to it, so it's no surprise that it's getting used a lot. After getting past the shopping search results, I found its producer, a Australian, Australian. toy company of the name of Head Start. Slogan being, in front for fun. I don't know what it means, but I'm in. Being in Australia, it's hard to find in any information on most of their toys. Before going to the bubble trouble, let's look at some of their other toys. And can we talk about how horrifying this logo is? It gives off Earthbound 2, or Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass vibes. The shade of pink they use looks like human flesh was bent in shape to be letters. And it's a color revealing toy based around babies. And these babies, man, let me tell you, they're looking kind of rough. I mean... Oh yeah, I guess I got a little sidetracked there. The other toys Head Start produce are Style Stars, Bloopies, Giftables, Cutie Crew, which I could not find any information on, Mad bots and more. So they're pretty established. Click on Bubble Trouble and you get this. Well, if this isn't eerie and foreboding at all, what is this, a money laundering scheme? Hoping that this website doesn't steal your credit card information, we proceed on. And you're greeted by this Bubble Trouble, what's your flavor? I don't know what my flavor is. Cat 3, can you please tell me? I'm a pink frosted sprinkle donut. I thought it would be cake with the name and all. Well, back to the website. When you scroll down, you can watch their one and only commercial. Scrolling down some more, you can watch their play episodes. The first one starts with Tropical Punch and Watermelon Slice. Melon Slice wants to catch the sun, but watermelon Sour Patch Candies keep disturbing her. Tropical Punch plays some trap and everything is fine. Second episode, Sunday Fun Day, is playing in the claw machine. Her little friend gets trapped inside. Bubblegum Kitty helps her out, but plot test, her little friend gets trapped too. These webisodes are strange. I mean, the plot itself is nothing special, although I think the claw machine episode is much better than the beach one. The set design is really cute, especially the space themed one, but there's something surreal about these episodes. Maybe it's the overuse of stock noises. Let me help! The watermelon laugh like human children instead of just making random cute noises. <laughs> the fact the water is slime. <sighs> the fact that there's no music and just ambient noise. It's all just weirdly eerie, that's all. There's also meet the crew vids, but I think I'll just read them. It's me, I like parties and summer vibes. It's me, I like the sun and melting hearts. It's me, I like pools. It's me, I like going on adventures. Nothing too complex. The final thing on their website is a social media type page. Something that most pink toy brands are doing these days. As you can see, these dolls aren't very popular. The reason for this is unknown. It could be the recent trend of more modern girl dolls. It could be bad marketing. It could be that they're hard to find. And it could be that I can't seem to find out why. But taking a closer look, the designs are pretty good. Maybe they could have used more diverse hairstyles or had a more open theme than bubblegum. 
What's your flavor? That's more of a blind bag saying than a blatant doll thing. It's called Bubble Trouble, but there's nothing to do with bubbles or trouble in that matter. Also, I don't see the bubble gum theme. The little friend aren't even a little gumballs. I mean, I'm glad they didn't waste materials, but still, where is the bubble gum theme? I'm just glad they didn't do something oddly violent like the Pikmin Pops Bubble Drops did. The art is good. The shine reminds me of Japanese cartoon Slime Girls, and Watermelon Slices are my favorite. Sadly, I cannot find the artist or designer for Bubble Trouble. If you know who they are, leave a comment. I wonder what else they worked on. BT was shown in New York Toy Fair 2020. There were supposed to be 10, but I guess they never got released. This is just season one after all. And for the most part, they cost $20. But I haven't seen them in stores yet, although I haven't been outside in a while, so I can't really say. Well, that covers everything I could find on Bubble Trouble, an unpopular and obscure bubblegum themed toy line. Also, when researching this, I found this. All right, what's next? Candies? What a horrendous name. When naming a toy, make it easy to find. If you go in the store and say, I'm looking for candies, all you're gonna get is, well, candies. And if you search candies, who guessed that all you're gonna get is more candy? You need a more dignified name that really sticks out. Let's take a look at the actual dolls, shall we? Also shown in Toy Fair 2020, the candy emphasizing toy line has gone missing. Where did they come from and where did they go? Well, they came from Far Out Toys, who produces morally questionable Rhine World games and DOI looking pulp hero snapbots. They bring the candy fashion doll line that was supposed to come out in fall 2020, also with an original YouTube series. If they do ever materialize, you can own Poppy Lollipop, Stella Sprinkle, Crystal Star, Olive Puff, Melody Rainbow, and Coco Star. The main gimmick is that it tastes like real candy, which sounds like a bit of a safety hazard, but it's overall a fun idea. And by looking at their designs, there was some thought put into them, and the colors really make them pop. I'll also give some points for more complex naming. It says something like Lollipop Pop or Sprinkle Cupcake. Also, I really like Coco Star and Stella Sprinkles designs. They have to be my top fave. I like what they did with the sweets theme. It's simple, but also new. The one thing I don't like though, is the eyes. Even now, the evil seed of what you've done germinates within you. They're over detailed and unwavering. They all have the same eye color too, which is a big no-no creative-wise. Besides that, they kind of remind me of La Da Dee dolls, just with properly proportioned head sizes, for toys at least. Far Out Toys seems like a small underdog company. Their YouTube channel doesn't have that many views, and when you search up Candy's fashion doll line, nothing shows up for them. It also seems like this will be their first ever fashion doll line. Will they come out? Well, there's only one month of fall left, and they're not even listed on their website. Not even for coming soon. So, maybe not. I hope so, though. They're really cute, despite the eyes. And I think they would make a great toy line. But hey, things like this come late. Especially if it's their first ever doll line. So only time will tell. Thank you for listening to what I have to say. I'll see you next time, okay? It seems like this will be their first fall...